أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله in this chapter as we previously discussed that it's of the greatest importance and significance to utilize this holy month of Ramadan as an opportunity to return back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to return back towards the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to utilize this month not only to seek forgiveness for past sins, but as an opportunity to gain closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've discussed its importance, but many of us will ask the question, well, now that I've made that particular step in my life, which I begin to analyze and realize that I have sinned in one way or in another, how do I go about returning back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As in, do I just have an intention that I want to return back towards Allah? Is there something that I can perform? Are there a set of actions that I can undergo in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a better chance to forgive my sins and to accept me in His door of mercy? So there are many different traditions that come up into this particular door of repentance. None as much of power that it possesses as much as the tradition of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And where a tradition states that Amir al-Mu'mineen one day was walking by and in the streets he found someone mm. doing something. When he did this particular act, Straight away he says, Astaghfirullah. So Amir al-Mu'mineen looks at this person and he says, Oh man, do you know what you've uttered? As in, it's not just a simple word that you say, Astaghfirullah. You know, oh Allah, forgive me. He says that this istighfar is a position that's very lofty in the heavens. Known as Maqam al-Aliyun. This particular position is attained by the, the highest ranking individuals, not just a normal person that just can come and say Astaghfirullah. So Amir al-Mu'mineen begins his tradition where he lists six points. If a person truly wants to return back towards Allah, truly wants Allah to forgive him, that he says in order for you to go through this, let's say, platform, in your life of repentance and return towards Allah, you need to at least apply these six points in order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you for your sin. So what are these different points and how much can we elaborate on them? So the first point that Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib mentions in these levels of repentance and return towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when you commit the sin, that you have this aspect of remorse over the sin. As we know from the traditions, that a person, a believer, when he performs a sin, this sin feels like a boulder from its weight on the soul of a believer. But you'll find the more you do this particular sin, that boulder becomes lighter and lighter and lighter until when you're sinning it becomes as the tradition states like a fly that you push away whenever it comes and lands on you so the understanding that Mimunish tries to paint is that sin when you commit it don't let it become so insignificant on your soul that you don't even pay attention to it that you do it without remorse or understanding that you've transgressed against yourself in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first level if you truly want to repent and to return back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the first level. You need to make sure that whenever you transgress, whenever you commit a sin, to start the process of repentance, you need to be remorseful over that which you've done. To be understanding that this thing, this act that you've performed, this disobedience, that you are remorseful, that you do not wish that you have done such an act. Number one, number two, I mean only in states of the utmost importance is that you do not return towards that action. So many of us will perform a particular act. And this sinful act could be anything. 
we'll do it, and straight away we'll say to ourselves, Astaghfirullah. I mean, we need states that's not istighfar, you know, five minutes down the line, do the same act again, and you say Astaghfirullah. In a week's time, you do the same act, and you say Astaghfirullah. No. It says on the first level, be remorseful. On the second level, that you should never return towards that sin. That's the second stage that you understand. It's not something that I do, then say Astaghfirullah, then return to, then say Astaghfirullah. No, that I completely shut it out of my life, that particular act of transgression. The third level, once we've achieved the first two, the third level that we delve into is that we have things that are owing to us between us and the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I owe someone money, let's say. That I should go out and return that which I owe that person. That I promise this person that I would do this particular act for him. Or I assist him in this manner. That I go and honor my words towards another creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I may have gossiped about a person. I may have said something about a person. I need to go towards that person and make sure that I have a clean slate between me and other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the third level which Amir al-Mu'mineen highlights to us in the understanding of the different levels and depths of returning towards Allah. Once we've achieved that third level, the fourth level, Amir al says, now that you've returned everything towards the creatures of Allah, now look at yourself. What do you owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there a salat that you haven't prayed? Do you have prayers that are owing? Do you have fasts that are owing? Do you have some nidr that you said, oh Allah, if you give me such and such, I will perform such and such, I will donate such and such. Is there anything owing between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You need to return. You need to make sure that you've accomplished that which you've promised. You make sure that you've prayed that which you need to pray, fast that which you need to fast. Any actions of worship, nidr, etc. that you need to do between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you ensure are up to date and everything is repaid. Now it gets beautiful. The fifth point Amir al-Mu'mineen highlights is one that can be looked at towards Muhar, uh, to be looked at towards Ramadan to be something where Amir al-Mu'mineen states the fifth point in your return towards Allah that you attend to the flesh of your body so much so that the skin hits its bone if that flesh was produced in unlawful ways and in lawful means unlawful nourishment, to attend to that flesh on your body. And so much so that new flesh comes in its place in halal means. Now I need you to really grasp the understanding that everything that you've built, it can be physical or spiritual, that anything that your body has grown to love, grown on, that you make sure that you filter it out of your system whether it be physically or spiritually, you've had haram to eat and that your body's grown on that which is haram, whether it be food or the money that I gain to eat with, that I make sure I remove that from my life to filter it. Spiritually, if I've grown in one way or another to love something that is a disobedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I need to ensure that I filter that disobedience and that love of that thing that is disobedience from my life and then I need to start anew to create a new life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept me and my soul that I want to replenish and renew and the sixth and final point in these levels of return and tawbah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and istighfar is one that is so beautifully said by the most eloquent Amir al muminin where he states very beautifully, he says, make the body just like it tasted the pleasure of disobedience. Let that same body feel the pain of obedience. That when you sinned, whatever sin that you sinned, you felt somewhat of a pleasure in committing that sin. 
It says, just like you felt that pleasure in that sin, I want you now to feel the pain in obedience. You want to wake up in the midst of the night to speak towards Allah and Salatul Layl. Your bed is quite comfortable. It's painful for you to come out of that comfort zone in order for you to speak to Allah in the midst of the night. He says you need to feel that. In order for you to truly be wanting to repent and doing istighfar and return back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these six points that Ibn Umineen highlights are just stepping stones. You can elaborate as much as you want in these particular aspects and how much you want to gain closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many different aspects in which you can practice to return back towards Allah. But we focused in this chapter on a particular tradition from Amir al-Mu'mineen so we can follow in its footsteps in order for us to return back towards Allah and utilize the blessings of the month of Ramadan in order for us to return towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.